Here are a couple of examples of the M1950 stove. Old blue there on the right, uh, a Rogers 1966, and the green one on the left from Coleman 1951. The blue one obviously was repainted at some point during its life, and uh, they're both cool little stoves. Coleman also marketed a version of this called the Model 536, I believe. And if there is a difference between the M1950 and the 536, um, I suspect it might just have to do with the little US printed on the side, but I don't know if there's any difference at all. I wanted to go over some failure points and how to prime these. So let's get started, shall we? I'm going to use the Coleman stove since it has the windscreen pot holder removed. And probably the simplest way of priming this is just pump it up five, six, eight times, and then you turn the knob all the way to the left, and as you can hear, the fuel is coming out. You just want a little bit in that, pre, uh, in that preheater cup there, and then you shut it off, and at the same time, you are also testing the shutoff on that. If it doesn't shut off, you do not want to light this stove. The shutoff is a rubber O-ring, or a donut as people call it, inside the fuel tank. And if it doesn't shut off, the fuel is just going to continue to come out. So between your shutoff valve and the tip of the jet, you've got an inch and a half or two inches of mechanism there. And there could be fuel stuck inside there. So when you light your preheat cup, as that warms up, that fuel is going to atomize and jet out pretty energetically, make you think that your shutoff valve has failed. But that's normal. Just be aware of it. You can see there that the fuel is burning down a little bit, but as the generator warms up and the fuel inside it begins to heat up and atomize, vaporize, it'll start jetting a little bit. And that'll happen uh, regardless of what you use as a primer if there's any fuel in the mechanism. There we go. Now we just light it, turn it up. That's the full on position. And it should shut off immediately. If it doesn't, you probably need to replace the little O-ring in there. I prefer to use denatured alcohol for my prime. That's still a little hot from the burn, but we'll light it up. It burns cleaner, doesn't leave soot on your stove. Of course, the flames can be harder to see. You might be able to see the alcohol is boiling in the preheat cup right now. So that's, another, that's why you don't want to overfill that. So you don't want it to expand and spill out. And those preheat cups, a lot of them have an asbestos rope in them. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do with it, but I don't have any in mine anymore. So, <laughs> there we go. And the same thing. I always light my flame for source first, and here we go. A nice, satisfying roar and for some reason the Coleman seems to be a little smoother its flame just sounds a little smoother than the Rogers ones 
may just be the individual stove, it may be a difference in the manufacturing, some sort, who knows. The more you use them, you'll start coming up with preheat procedures that work for you and your stove. So experiment safely and have fun. As you may have guessed, there is no simmer function on these stoves. They're full on or full off. This is what can happen if your pip needs replaced when you try to pump it up. That's bad because that means there is vaporized gas trying to escape and that can cause a fire. The little pip that serves as a non-return valve is inside this little nut. It's spring-loaded and what happens is when you push the pump, the spring is depressed the air goes into the tank which allows it to pressurize and then the spring and the fuel pressure pushes back on the return to seal the hole. If that is deteriorating, if it's going bad or if it's just too hard or not seating right, you'll get leaking. So it fits in here like this. It's that little rubber bit there inside a brass holder with the springs. And it goes, it goes against that that little hole that you might be able to see in there and it seals it just like that now if you get a new pip you might have to you might get some backing out at first until it breaks in so you might have to play with it a little bit to get it to seal properly make sure it works the other gasket on the pump is right in here I don't know if you can see that it's uh, a little black gasket that fits around on the inside there and seals the uh, top of the pump. There are spare parts often contained within the handle of your pump, but if you have an old stove, chances are the rubber parts will be old and dried out and you'll probably need to replace those anyhow. Um, there are resources online if you can't find what you need at the hardware store. Old Coleman Parts is one that I can think of offhand, and they should uh, hook you up and give you everything you need to keep your stove running safely.